Uh, first off, I want to thank the grace of heaven and the virtues of the masters, the mercy of the grand predecessor, the assessor, transmitting masters, lecturers, and everyone here today for <clears throat> this opportunity to present the topic uh, 10 great vows. Um, it says, uh, you know, to take the initiative to enter the path of vow cultivation, start with vows and urgently cultivate. Sentient beings can be buried with initiative and resolve. The Buddha way can be achieved with vows. So vows uh, are very important. Um, well, the, the 10 great vows are the vows that we, those are the first vows that we take uh, when we receive the Tao. In fact, they take them and we take them when, when yeah, during the Tao receiving ceremony. So whether we realize it or not, right? So, <clears throat> so it's saying that without making these vows and obviously, you know, trying to fulfill the vows, uh, you know, we'll still remain in the cycle of reincarnation. We can't transcend. So why is this? So the vows, yeah, I mean, these are like goals, right? Um, yeah, I can say they're goals. <laughs> but they also, it's a force, uh, you can say a helping force to, um, so that we can continue to, to cultivate. Okay, so you can say they help us to keep our faith, right, uh, and have that confidence, perhaps, um, so that we can continue uh, along the way and, and not, you know, uh, basically give up when we encounter trials and tribulations, okay, or, you know, we have fits and starts, you know, we, we, you know, we feel very, uh, very gung-ho, very excited, very, uh, uh, inspired at this moment, but then, you know, when something happens or, you know, we don't see results, then uh, we kind of like slack off or, or kind of give up again. Uh, and then, you know, we can kind of repeat that process. But so, but the vows will keep us on that track, on that path. Okay. So, and they, so therefore they help us to succeed in cultivating doubt. Right, so taking and fulfilling vows is a requirement to attain enlightenment and Buddha. Right, all Buddhas um, or Bodhisattvas, they they make many vows, right? Great vows. Okay, so you now th these are the four general great vows of, of of Buddhas. Okay, to save all the innumerable innumerable uh, ascension beings. Okay, so in other words, you know, we ferry to try to ferry others. Uh, by ferrying others, we're also, we also ferry ourselves, um, okay? And then to extinguish all the inexhaustible afflictions. Of course, sentient beings are full of afflictions, right? Uh, all sorts of problems. Um, <clears throat> and so we have to cut off all our, these vexations, try to, and help other sentient beings to, to do that too, uh, to kind of, I guess, I guess trying to enlighten them in terms of the correct views of, of life uh, and reality, right? To, to kind of overcome that false uh, mind and mindset. Uh, to master all the immeasurable dharmas, right? So not to seek any false forms. Um, yes, there, there are many, you look at you know, all the dharmas, the teachings of the Buddha uh, and of the saints and sages, Right, they're, they're obviously they're, they're countless, okay? But uh, ultimately the true Dharma is within, right? So, and ultimately we have to let go of all these forms, right? Uh, and then to achieve the unsurpassed Buddha enlightenment, right? So that's, you can say that's the ultimate goal uh, to, you know, when we are sentient beings, we are just basically, we're confused and lost in this world. Um, and then to wake up from that, as if you know we were just in a dream to wake up from that uh, is a Buddha, right? So a Buddha is always in that awakened state. Okay, so uh, you know hopefully we we can you know that's what we're working towards, trying to achieve that. Because if we if at any time we are not awake, we fall back we fall back you know, into that dream world, this world of, that we're in, the suffering, okay? All right, now, uh, but there are three conditions in which the Buddha cannot bury, right? So even the Buddha cannot bury uh, everyone, 
they have to have an affinity, okay? Um, and also person has to, uh, well, they, they cannot bury those who do not believe or do not have faith, right? So, uh, and then finally, uh, they cannot bury those who are not willing or do not take vows, okay? So, so that is one of the uh, key um, parts, uh, complements here. And, and that, that is, you can say that is the reason why we must take those vows, 10 great vows when we receive the Tao, right? So, because when we receive the Tao, the idea is that we have entered, you can say it's like the Shodapana, the, the entering the, the, the stream of enlightenment towards enlightenment, going towards enlightenment. So, um, but, you know, there are a lot of people who don't, don't realize that, uh, but again, you know, it's it, for some people, uh, they do understand it. And hopefully, you know, we, we need to educate and enlighten uh, people about these, the vows uh, that they, they took. And also, you know, to continue to, to help them to cultivate and learn and understand more uh, so that they can continue to their cultivation. So the conditions basically boil down, boil down to whether a person's affinity has matured is ripe or not. Okay. So, you know, it's you can say it's a timing issue, maybe for each person. Some people are just not ready. They don't have, you know, that basic affinity, or you know, in this lifetime, they just don't believe, they don't have that kind of faith, so they will not uh, receive the Tao uh, or cultivate, right? So, uh, but hopefully, you know, the, the more they uh, they practice, I guess, practice all the things that. Um, you know, the Buddha talks about, uh, you know, like charity, for example, doing those types of things, uh, you know, cultivating oneself, getting rid of uh, one's temperament and, and correcting one's faults. These things gradually over time will build up that affinity. Uh, and then when the affinity is, is ripe or mature, then perhaps uh, they will be ready, okay? Receiving the Tao is not the same as joining some religion, okay, becoming a part of a religion. Uh, it's not that, right? It's really getting that point transmission that you, you know, you can say the three treasures, the, the awakening, all right, if you will. Um, and so this is a very precious. This is something that, you know, once we get that point transmission, then our path to transcend this cycle of birth, death, and rebirth is open for us, okay? So, so that's such a great opportunity, but it, it is hard to come by for, for some people. A lot of people, most people in the world uh, have not encountered Tao, right? Uh, either, you know, the, the conditions aren't right for them, they aren't ready, uh, or it's just that maybe the Tao is not there in that place for them, okay? so. Um, so, you know, we take the vows as a show of our sincerity, faith, and commitment. Uh, that's, that's very important, right? So uh, that's, you know, we, we have to have that sincerity. Um, you know, the vows for, I guess, yeah, for, I, vows are, you can say they are serious, right? I mean, they're, it's a very uh, uh, serious matter. I mean, it's not, you don't know, like just take vows, just, you know, kind of jokingly. So, um, so we obviously we have to be sincere, uh, and you know they, it is uh, kind of a commitment. It is a commitment. That um, all right. Uh, so, okay. <clears throat> now, the vow. Well, uh, you know the Chinese character for vow is composed of two parts: the top and bottom. The top means original, and then the bottom is the heart and mind. Okay, so. So basically a vow is really the original heart and mind, and you can say the conscience, okay? Uh, so yeah, so it's really, <laughs> when, we, when we take these vows, it's like that's expressing the original, uh, our, you can say our original intention, our original heart and mind, okay? Our true self. Uh, <clears throat> okay, so we take vows to reveal our conscience to God. We should reveal our original and true heart and mind, okay? Uh, no, so what's the true, uh, the, the false heart and mind is, is actually one of greed, anger, ignorance, you know, three poisons, attachment, bias, ego, selfishness, all these things. 
right? So that that's that represents the false mind. So we want to have, we need to reveal our true heart and mind, which is one of virtue. You know, for example, sincerity, faith, fidelity, compassion, benevolence, righteousness, propriety, wisdom, etc., equanimity, and selflessness. Ultimately, okay. So so that is uh, ultimately what what our true heart and mind is. All right. Um, okay. So vows um, also are like a talisman to avoid disasters. A talisman is like a lucky charm, right? Uh, so, um, you know, there, there are many stories in, uh, in the Tao uh, that, or, you know, even, even in, in like, you know, their Buddhist stories, uh, people who made, you know, taken or made vows uh, uh, and they've, you know, overcome uh, a certain situation as a result of that, okay, of, of trying to fulfill that vow, right? Uh, so, you know, there's this one story, a, a lecture of fun. Um, he, uh, he, he basically, you know, had, uh, he, he, you know, he was in one, I guess, the northern part, a, a temple in the northern part of uh, Taiwan. Uh, and basically he was, he was he stayed he was in the temple right and he's, he's well, he, at the time he wasn't a lecturer okay but uh you know he's i guess he claimed maybe a temple host um and but after a while you know and it was fine until sometime maybe he he didn't uh, get along with uh some of the pe other people in the temple and so you know and plus you know he was also he needed he was looking for a job I uh, couldn't find a job uh, in that area and found a job in, in the southern Taiwan. And so he moved down there. Uh, and when he did, he, he did not return to the temple. Uh, but <clears throat> little did he know, because he had this karmic debt to pay, right? And, uh, you know, so this karmic retribution kind of caught up to him. Basically, you know, he, he retreated from the temple now. And, and, and so his vows, you know, the vows that he took as, as uh, his 10 great vows plus, you know, his uh, temple host vows, um, maybe the vegetarian vow, right? Uh, caused him to have an accident, right? Uh, and basically, you know, with heaven's mercy, uh, he endured hell for three days to repay three lifetimes or three lives of chronic debts. Basically, in some past lifetime, he had actually killed three people. Okay, I mean, it was, it was actually they, they were all together, and they were, it was due to greed. Okay, they they, they came in some money, uh, and then I guess he wanted to keep it all for himself. So, so basically, those three people that he killed, their souls, they were uh, you know absolutely they they were not good people. You now they had suffered you know punished in, in hell for a while. When they came out, they were looking for them. And, but because he was in the temple initially and he had those vows, uh, that kind of protected him. And because he was, he was, you know, trying to fulfill those vows. But once he left, uh, kind of departed from the temple, that was their chance. So then basically he wasn't trying to fulfill his vows. So he didn't have the force, the power of the vows. Uh, and so the, the karmic force caught up to him, right? So basically, you know, we say the power of vows is greater than the power of karma. So even though, yeah, we say that we can't, you know, we can't change the karma, but uh, when we make vows, that's why we, uh, you hear, you know, testimony masters and, and others say people, when, when people have problems, uh, you know, especially like you know, maybe they get cancer or, or something serious, uh, but they say to take, make a vow, right? So like, First, you know, like becoming, take the vegetarian vow, and then uh, maybe vow to uh, ferry people, you know, so many people, whatever. Because um, once you have these vows, and obviously you have to have that sincerity, and you have to put in the effort to try to fulfill the vows, then then there is, you can say, there's that protection. Okay, that that force uh, is there. Uh, you can say the Buddhas uh, will help you, um, and so they can kind of like block that karma for a while, prevent that karma, you know, prevent you from getting that retribution. Um, until you've accumulated, you can say that maybe you have more merit, that you can pay off that debt. 
uh, you know, so um, so so that that is you know you say that that's the power of the valve. <laughs> so now the valves uh, are the guide for cultivating Dow um, and the driving force for practicing Dow and uh, you can say the latter to attain uh, Buddhahood, right? So great vowels have great force, small vowels have small force. If we cultivate without vowels, our goal is unclear. Like in, uh, in oh, okay, so uh, like a rudder, rudderless boat or horse without reins, how can we arrive at the other shore? So without the force of vowels to keep us going, when we encounter difficulties and hardships, we inevitably will regress. Yeah, so uh, basically, you know, because <laughs> we know that, okay, the value you can say is also like a promise, right? So uh, we promise to do this. And so kind of remind us, remind ourselves, no matter uh, what the situation is, now how hard, how difficult it is, um, we still do uh, basically try to then fulfill our vows, right? So that'll keep us on track, right? Uh, so the achievement of the ancient cultivators and bodhisattvas is because of their vows. So, you know, any, you can pick any bodhisattva or Buddha um, to realize that basically, yeah, they all take, they made vows, right? So Amitabha Buddha, I vowed 48 great vows, um, and among them to enable everyone to enter the Western paradise, right? Uh, Avalokitesvara or Guani bodhisattva vowed, you know, there's 12 great vows, and one was to rescue session beings and call for help. Uh, uh, Siddhi Garba Buddha, uh, Poinsava, also vowed, uh, he had 72 great vows, you know, not to enter Nirvana until the underworld was empty of souls. Actually, Guan Yin also vowed to say that if, unless sentient beings are saved, all sentient beings are saved, <laughs> you won't become a Buddha. So, so obviously very great vows. These, you know, obviously these means that they will be at it forever pretty much, as long as they were sentient beings. Okay. Manjushi, okay, took 141 great vows, and Samantabhadra took 10 great vows. All right, so, so it's not really, I mean, we don't need to take that, you know, that many vows. Uh, you know, the 10 great vows by themselves um, are sumu, um, you know, our, our divine matriarch, 18th matriarch, uh, also said that if we are able to fulfill just fulfill our 10 great vows, the 10 great vows, then uh, we can succeed uh, in returning to heaven. Okay, so, um, all right, so now we jump into the actual, the, the wording of the vows. Uh, basically, so um, this is, you know, this happens when we, we're kneeling down and we are told to repeat these the vows, basically, right? <clears throat> Uh, so it says, you know, I, you know, and then we say our name, uh, sincerely kneel before the altar of God. Today I seek the Fai Great Tao. Okay, we're in the Fai uh, group. Okay. Um, uh, the true mind to mind transmission. After receiving Tao, I will vow, I will, okay. And then, so basically, you know, it leads into saying the first two vows. And then, but if I should, then the rest of the vows, ten, three through 10, are kind of, it's kind of like the negative, uh, basically things that we shouldn't do, okay. Uh, uh, then I will incur heaven's retribution, which basically means you now accept punishment from uh, my conscience, okay. Uh, okay, so the first <clears throat> vow says to, to sincerely embrace the Tao. Right. A sincere person uh, has a truly sincere heart and mind that's wholehearted, happy, and willing. And even in the face of trials, there are no complaints or regrets. And an embracing person always holds to the original, you could say the pure heart and mind, and is always cautious, embraces the Tao, and follows and practices until the end. Okay. So uh, like Zenzu, okay, who, who was uh, a disciple of, um, uh, of Confucius or a later disciple, right? after receiving the Tao, was very cautious with, with words and actions, you know, as if, you know, he's walking on an edge of a cliff or on thin ice, right? And then another, the young, young, youngest disciple of, uh, 
uh, Confucius, you know, Yang Wei, uh, maybe he's not the youngest, but very young one, also uh, kept, you know, kept in mind and never forgot, right? So basically, you know, he was very cautious anytime he, there was a, he made a mistake or, or whatever, he, he would correct himself and make sure that he didn't make that mistake again, okay? Uh, and then Mencius is all the same, the same, same way. Um, so a person of sincerity, right? As you can say, they're in good faith, right? They're, they're not, they're not self-deceiving, right? If, if we're not sincere, you can say that we are kind of deceiving ourselves, okay? Um, I mean, we may be deceiving others, but we're also deceiving ourselves. And we're deceiving, you know, God as well. Uh, when the true nature is the master, so, you know, then we can actually be, you know, we should, we should be very free, okay? Liberated. Uh, okay. Um, you know, there's a saying that cultivation without sincerity is just passing the time in confusion. So, you know, maybe like just going through the motions of cultivating uh, to appear like you're cultivating, but you're not really, not, not sincere about it. So then that, that's, uh, it won't really get us uh, anywhere. Um, Oh, so uh, yeah, I forgot to mention, right? So the Ten Great Vows, yeah, these are the promises that we made to God, like, you know, we see the doubt, right? Basically, you know, to be a decent person, human being, right? And to, to restore our true nature, our, you know, that reveal that, yeah, you can say that our conscience reveal our, that true uh, heart and mind, okay? And of course, it's, you know, the goal, uh, or the force to push us to achieve. Okay. So, you know, after we see the Tao, then we're willing to, you know, cultivate piously, you know, with devotion, you know, learn and understand the way of Tao, act according to our conscience, change our bad habits, our ways to good, uh, use the power of vows to change our thoughts and restrain our mind and actions. Okay. Uh, so, you know, we have to pay attention to our mind because it is the master of our actions and the source of. Uh, the blessings and disasters that uh, befall us. Uh, you know, all material things will eventually be empty. So we should act, we should just, you know, not not, not pursue those things, right? Because, uh, you know, just follow the natural affinity, okay? Um, cultivation has a purpose. We do not deviate from it. In stillness, right, we ferry ourselves. Uh, you can say that's kind of the inner cultivation. Uh, in, in motion, we bury others. So that's the external side, right? <clears throat> uh, yeah. So, uh, you know, we guard the Tao heart and cultivate deeply, eliminate selfish desires, you know, to broaden our, our heart and mind. Okay. Now, the three levels, now there, you can say that there are like three levels of sincerely embraced the Tao, right? At the lowest level, which hopefully, you know, everyone can can uh, achieve is, you know, at least we're not being conceited uh, or, you know, too proud or arrogant, right? We're not perfunctory, you know, not superficial, that is, uh, not being careless and fake or not, you know, pretending. Um, you know, at the next higher level of, of, of sincerely embracing the Tao, then it's, you know, to be also be humble and sincere, and sincere, do good and avoid evil, right? Uh, then we can have peace of mind and being down to earth. Uh, at the highest level of sincerely embracing the you know, not having any attachments uh, at all and acting without self motive, always being diligent, right? consistent, and not influenced by the conditions. Okay. Um, so hopefully, you know, we we are somewhere in there, uh, uh, at least, um, right? Okay, so we must be sincere without false pretense, right? Without uh, you know having uh, false or other type of motive, motivation. <laughs> okay, uh, believe that the Tao is true, the principle is true, and heaven's mandate is true. Okay, so you know we have to have that sincerity to believe it. Uh, follow the spirit of the saints and sages. Uh, when we obtain a good, always keep it in mind. Hold the Tao heart. Hold to the Tao heart. Let our conscience be the master. Nurture and exp expand our virtues and inner qualities. Okay. All right. So the second uh, vow is to 
sincerely and honestly repent. Um, that's what the gentlemen say. Um, the uh, ladies say, excuse me, sincerely and honestly cultivate and to re, you know, cultivate and refine themselves. Okay. Uh, so a, a sincere and honest person takes one step at a time and does not cut corners, right? Uh, a repentant person repents of past sins, offenses, and mistakes with a true heart and will not repeat the wrongdoings of the past. A cultivator uh, rectifies the heart and mind, suppresses delusion, and restores um, the pure original nature. A refinement is to refine our essence, to be flexible and harmonious, to be free from hindrances or obstacles. Now, although you know, repentance and cultivation are different, right? In practice, they you know they share that same aspect of the sincerity and honesty, okay. Um, in the past, I mean, I guess why they made these different for male and female is, you know, in the past, because men, uh, ancient times, I guess, you know, men kind of worked outside the house and then the, the, the wives, I guess, the, the women were in at home. Uh, and so men tend to commit more, I guess, those crimes or whatever, or commit wrongdoings. Uh, outside. Um, the women, maybe they were more, you know, uh, I mean, they're always at home, so they're, they're talking and gossiping, I guess. So that's, uh, so, but, you know, the, the emphasis is on, you know, being sincere and honest uh, in kind of correcting ourselves. Being, okay. <clears throat> so you say the three levels of sincerely and honestly repenting, uh, are cultivating and defining. So you can say at the at the minimum level, we should say we should be not not um, let's see not aware. Okay, maybe we we're, we're not aware of the mistakes, but when they were pointed out, that we will sincerely correct it. Right, we'll not put on a false appearance, but we'll bravely admit to the mistakes. All right, so this is kind of a at the lower level. Um, of course, if we deny everything, then you know, there's no no sincerity at all. Uh, at the next higher level, we say do not hide or cover up on mistakes. I constantly self-reflect and inform. Okay, so um, this is where we can, hopefully we can see our own mistakes uh, without having other people having to tell us. Uh, and then we act on uh, trying to reform and correct ourselves. At a higher level, highest level, we can say we have no bias and duality. So we're no longer in that, stuck in this duality, okay. Uh, no deviant views, no delusions, never having an evil or selfish thought. So, but this is completely, you can say there's egoless and selfless, right? Um, okay. Uh, so now, the, uh, and then it goes on and says, okay, so after we say those, those first two vows, make those first two vows, and it says, if I should, and then we go into the next the following vows, then, and then finally you say, then I will incur heaven's retribution or accept punishment from my conscience, okay? So we will have regrets later on. Basically, you know, that's saying, we'll, we'll have regrets later on if we break uh, or do not fulfill the vows that we took, right? if we don't take it seriously, uh, uh, or we just, in fact, we completely go against it, you know, I mean, that, that's even worse, okay? <clears throat> so, but <clears throat> you can see that the first two vows are very important. It's like a foundation. Right, because uh, without sincerity, the rest, everything else is meaningless. Right? It doesn't really mean anything. Right? Um, without repentance and cultivation, we cannot fulfill our vows and achieve transcendence. So you can say the sincerity is kind of like the 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 you know the, the inner the aspect, and then repentance, cultivation, kind of the action. Okay, the, right. So so we need both. Right. <clears throat> Uh, so then this third vow, um, right, so it, it, in Chinese, it, you know, the way it's worded, it says, you know, if I, sh if I do these things, right, so, but here we say not, okay, so because the vow is basically to not do these things, right, so we say not have false pretenses, right, so it says false pretense is to pretend, right, being fake or insincere, to have an ulterior motive, attachment, or greed. Um, you know, so for example, you know, 
uh, we use the DAO name, right? We, and recognition and reputation to improve one's own standing, right? Because so, so uh, you know, maybe like, for example, in Taiwan, right? So, uh, you know, some of these politicians, they receive a DAO, okay? Now, are they really sincere? Uh, you know, you know, basically they're probably doing it to uh, use the DAO uh, to, to say, hey, I'm a DAO member, so DAO members should vote for me, you know? So, so it's for their own benefit, really. Uh, so, so that that's you know that would have that would be a false pretense, basically. <laughs> uh, use DAO for other than its intended purpose. Okay, uh, you, know, you know this is like uh, the DAO is for uh, our cultivation of enlightenment um, and for you know bearing uh, or saving other such beings. Right, it should not be for anything else. Um, uh, greedy for or have attachment to merit. Yeah, so some people think, oh, hey, now I can receive the DAO and I perform these merits and then, so then I can, you know, get something, okay, out of it, right? <clears throat> uh, so, you know, agree, okay, so in this case, though, this, this might be more referring to, so, okay, I've received, it's the, I, I just received a DAO and then I hear about, oh, hey, you can perform merits and merits will, you know, uh, help you, right? <clears throat> so, and you hear that, hey, when you ferry people, you get you get a lot of merits. And so, so then that becomes like a motivation for people to say, hey, I, I wanna ferry people so I can get the merits, right? So, but the problem is, you know, then people might carelessly or recklessly bring people to receive the doubt for, just for the merits, right? They don't care about really the, the person cultivating or whatever, they just want the numbers, right? Uh, so, but there are consequences to that, right? People who um, argue, yeah, so when, when that happens, when you bring people who are not really sincere or willing to receive the DAO, right? They, they, they can start arguing uh, on the spot uh, or, or re rejecting things, you know, uh, or afterwards, right? So things like that. So, so we should not, you know, have any thought of gaining merits, okay? It should just be done because it's, yeah, it's, it's, the, it's, it's what we should be doing, okay? Uh, pretend, or pretending to be a DAO cultivator, okay? So again, this is like, uh, yeah, I don't know, either doing it for, the, again, it's probably for some other motive, okay? Um, that they just wanna do it, uh, to pretend that they're 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 part of the, the DAO community, but they're not really okay, or using DAO for personal gain, right? Um, you know, sometimes you know people they come in, they receive DAO, they think, oh, they can benefit like their health, for example. Right? You know, they they tried all sorts of things and it doesn't work, and they say hey, maybe the DAO can help me, right? Uh, or you know, <clears throat> they want to gain fortune, wealth, right? Uh, so you see, you know, these movies where uh, these bad guys, they're gonna, they're gonna kill or they're gonna rob uh, the bank or something and then they go pray to the Buddha first, right? <laughs> um, you know, this is this is a total lack of sincerity, right? And no true fit, not true faith. Uh, and so they won't get the outcome that they're looking for. So even for something personal like, oh, you know, their, their health, but it, you know, they have that motive and it's not, so that's not the true sincere uh, heart, right? Um, so you can say also there, there are varying degrees of, uh, uh, of you know, not uh, having these false pretenses or, uh, you know, so, or not having false pretenses. So that's, yeah, I mean, so a lot of people, they, maybe they're a student now and they don't really, uh, they come to the temple, they maybe they listen to class, but they don't really do anything else, okay. Um, you know, so basically, you know, at the lower degree uh, level, we can say, yeah, if we stop passing idle time with DAO, so, you know, yeah, we receive the DAO and we don't do anything, right? So we realize that we should do something and, you know, pretending to be cultivators so as to realize the force of the DAO. So basically we need to, yeah, kind of wake up and realize that, hey, we can't just receive the DAO and not do anything. We have to practice, we have to cultivate, okay? Um, and, you know, basically also fulfill these vows. <clears throat> Uh, we can cut off our inconsistent words and actions uh, and words and intentions, right? Uh, so that's also, you know, trying to correct ourselves in terms of, you know, being 
uh, having pretenses, etc. All right. Um, okay. And then, oh, okay. So given uh, given that we have the intention to cultivate DAO, right? We should work hard for our liberation from Sapsara, which is this 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 world that we're in, right? Uh, therefore, we must not have false pretense. With the utmost sincere heart, we should uh, make kind vows from the Bodhi mind. First, firstly, for the benefit of sentient beings, right? This is the expression of sincere and true intentions. So it's for the benefit of others, right? Uh, it's not just for our own benefit, okay? Um, <clears throat> right, so then number four is to not regress instead of progress. Right? Those who regress have doubts um, in their mind, have the intent, but do nothing. Knowing and doing are inconsistent. Cultivating doubt in name, but not in actuality. Even a lifetime of such cultivation is hard to show any progress. <clears throat> okay, so, you know, as you say, yeah, uh, we regress because maybe we are lazy. <laughs> we just don't have that motivation or drive. Uh, you know, we're just being too passive. We just sit there and we don't do anything until someone you know, asks us to do something, right? Uh, so cultivation is like kind of rolling against the current on a river, right, above a waterfall, right? So if we stay still, then we will be swept along and dropped down over the waterfall. So once we lose this life, it can be very long time and very difficult to regain a human life. So we, so we shouldn't be careless, okay? So we really have to put in that effort, right? Uh, when we slack off, right, don't forget the power of our vows and the original intent because it affects the rise and fall of our ancestors and descendants. I mean, you must be aware, right? So again, uh, when we receive the Tao, if we cultivate for our merits, uh, you know, these things will affect our ancestors. Right, they benefit if we are doing these things. But if we are not cultivating, then they do not benefit at all. So, you know, uh, you can say there are varying degrees of this. Also, you know, it's like we're starting, we are diligent at first, but uh, we end in kind of negligence. Suddenly we're progressing or regressing, you know, maybe not having any aspiration at all, right? Uh, or not able to endure tests and trials and failing to fulfill our vows. Uh, and, you know, at, a, at a higher, highest level, then, you know, it's like, uh, you know, you know we're, if we're not able to uh, earnestly practice the six parameters, right? So that's, you know, like diligence, forbearance, precepts, giving, and wisdom. Okay. So, yeah, it's very easy to, you can say, regress. Um, and, and, you know, so we have to be careful, uh, constantly be vigilant and, 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 you know, kind of diligent in, you know, trying to make progress and to, to cultivate, okay. All right, the fifth one says, you know, not to not deceive and discredit the masters. Uh, you know, those are like the holy teachers and patriarchs, right? To deceive the masters is to show uh, res I mean, yeah, to show is to show respect on the surface, but disobeying the instructions and doing whatever, whatever you want. Okay, so uh, that's, yeah, on the surface, you say, okay, okay, you know, whatever instructions or the teachings, you know, so yeah, 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 sounds good. Uh, but then we, we don't, we don't follow them or, or we go against them. Okay, <clears throat> to discredit the masters is to not recognize their status and virtues. Right, to not be grateful and spreading the master's virtues, even going so far as to claim oneself to be a master. Right, so that's that's kind of more serious. Uh, uh, you, you can say also, you know, the, when I'm talking about the teachers and masters uh, to deceive or discredit their, I mean, uh, you know, you can also say that it's not respecting like transmitting masters, lectures, uh, introducers, guarantors, or to defy. Uh, heaven's mandate, right? Uh, <clears throat> also, you know, to leave the lineage of the Tao and, and the Dharma boat, the temple or Tao field, right, of the enlightened masters to establish their own sect. So they split off and decide that, hey, they're going to do their own thing. Uh, or are not able to unite with, you know, the patriarchs heart and mind to comprehend the true meaning of the great Tao, to spread the truth. Okay, so that's kind of more the highest level, right? Uh, well, chutzpah means, you know, like, 
gall, audacity, guts, nerve, right? <clears throat> um, you know, the, the, yeah, certainly the enlightened master, you know, our holy teacher, uh, it, it's, it, you know, it, it's through great mercy that we can receive the Tao, that we receive the Tao. And so we should definitely respect uh, the, the master, right? And, and, you know, we have to give, appreciate and be grateful. Uh, okay. Because basically through this one point transmission, so once we, it, we can, you know, transcend this life, uh, this, this samsara. So a cultivator must never forget the kindness of the holy teacher, always follow the holy teacher's instructions, emulate their conduct and actions, uh, continue their aspiration, practice their Tao, and fulfill their wishes and never change. Okay, to be considered, uh, we say, respecting the master, teacher and the Tao. Okay, so so basically these are kind of things that we should keep in mind uh, to you know show our respect and uh, for the masters, the teachers and, and the Tao. Okay, six one uh, says not despise the predecessors. Um, to despise to despise means you know contempt uh, or, you know, Basically, disdain, kind of such disrespect or dislike. Okay. To despise the predecessors means to belittle or look down upon, uh, to show contempt or disrespect. Uh, predecessors, broadly speaking, are those who have received the Tao before us. But narrowly speaking, it can mean transmitters who pioneered the Tao. Okay. Uh, the holy teacher also said that people of virtue who are emulated by others can also be considered predecessors. All right. <clears throat> so, predecessors, you know, regardless of their Tao knowledge and character, are worthy examples for us to follow. When we emulate the virtuous and learn closely, how can we despise them? Right? Even if they are not as knowledgeable, their spirit of dedication and sacrifice are worthy of our emulation. Right? So we can't despise them. Like if our grand predecessor and predecessors did not dedicate and sacrifice themselves for the Tao, how can we have this opportunity to receive the Tao? Right? Moreover, just like uh, the sixth patriarch says, Right? If we look down on people, we have immeasurable sins because all session beings have the Buddha nature and our future Buddhas. So we have to be very careful. Um, okay. Uh, you know, so basically, you know, you have varying degrees of despising predecessors, like not, not able to carry on the cause of the predecessors, to continue carrying the torch of truth, to bear the responsibilities of saints and sages, are uh, not able to further the aspirations of predecessors to fulfill or complete the great dharma and um, virtue of predecessors' instructions. And, you know, at the, I guess maybe the, the worst level is, uh, you know, having very high-minded arrogance uh, and having no regard and, and having disrespect for and disobeying the predecessors. Okay. All right, so number seven, says respect and obey the temple rules and regulations. Uh, and without the rules, it is difficult to become perfect or achieve harmony. And therefore we have laws of the country, rules of a household, rules, regulations of temple. Without these rules, the temple would be like, a, you know, in Chinese they say, kind of like a vegetable market, right? Uh, the rules not only maintain order in the temple, but also have the subtle effect of rectifying the heart, similar to the Buddhist precepts. And so, you know, that's why we have in the temple, we have like the 15 rules and regulations of the temple. Okay. Um, and then we also have the thing we just mentioned earlier, the respecting the, the teachers and masters and, and the Tao. Uh, is also, you know, observing the protocol uh, of above and below us. Okay. Uh, there's uh, other things, you know, um, the three distinctions, uh, things like that. Okay, so there are all many, many things. But these are all, they're, I mean, they, they, they all serve a purpose. Okay, so obviously that's, you know, it's a different topic uh, talking about those, but we, we must respect and obey them, right? Um, <clears throat> now, you know, at, at a lower level, I guess, if, if, if you know, not, not respecting and obeying the temple rules, it's like, you know, make a lot of noise in the temple. Uh, or, uh, or make you know uh, make a scene, create a scene in the temple to be sloppy or 
or inappropriately dressed coming when you come to the temple uh, to not know the proper etiquette and manners within the temple. Okay, so that's you know that's kind of a low level. Yeah, I mean, new people they come in they don't know these things, uh, and so it's actually for us who are already you know more senior or you can say we are kind of like predecessors to them. Uh, we need to teach them. Okay, make them aware of the rules. Um, uh, you know, at a higher level, it's like, uh, you know, not holding to the five constants and five precepts, not practicing the 10 wholesome deeds and eight virtues, okay. <laughs> uh, and, you know, at the, at the higher level, then it's like to give rise to thoughts due to conditional influence, to walk, stand, sit, recline, not according to center harmony, okay. So, so obviously, you know, that, that's very high level um, to, to, because it's not just the external temple rules, regulations, right? It's also internal, right? Because that, that would be a very high level. Okay. So a cultivator must respect and obey the rules and regulations to be like a Tao cultivator. Although the rules um, and regulations of the temple are provisional, which means, yeah, I mean, they were called provisional, meaning like they're, they're temporary uh, by, by the holy teacher. Okay. Um, uh, they can be applied with some flexibility. We cannot bend the rules too much and lose their dignified nature, thus violating the spirit or intent of the rules. All right, so sometimes we, you know, because uh, we try to uh, bend things to bend the rules too much, okay? Uh, and then when you do that, you know, to a certain extent, then it becomes, well, then what's the point, right? You're not even following the rules at all, not at least not following the spirit of the rules. So, so we, we make sure that we uh, don't do that. Uh, okay, so number eight says not reveal heavenly secrets. All right, so Tao is a treasure of heaven. Back right, from ancient times through the present, it has always been transmitted uh, outside of the scriptures uh, and secretly to the virtuous and worthy ones. Okay, so, um, you know, if you, if you look through all the scriptures, to, to all the sutras, right? You will not find uh, the three treasures, right? They don't, they don't talk about, excuse me, they don't talk about it directly, okay? It's just hinting, they're hinting that there's something, okay? Uh, because it's a heavenly secret. So even the patriarchs back then cannot reveal it, right? To any, to, to people, just, right? Or even the Buddha cannot reveal it, right? So uh, basically, you know, so like in the religious teaching, right, so they hint at it, they don't reveal it. Um, you know, there's also, you know, this, this passage from the Holy Bible, right, Revelation. It says, you know, he who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. To him who overcomes, I will give some of the hidden mana. I will also give him a white stone with a new name written on, only known, known only to him who receives it. So this is, that's what happened when we received the Tao. We receive right the three treasures. We we know the uh, the mantra, I guess you say the divine mantra, um, and also you know we're receiving the the the, the mind to mind that, that point transmission. Okay, so this again, this is kind of hinting at that. I mean, it doesn't explicitly say you know what what it is, right? <clears throat> uh, just like you know the sixth the patriarch when he transmitted down to six. Six patriarch, he did it in the middle of the night under cover of his robe so that you know no one else can hear. Uh, so you know, we can imagine if the three treasures were revealed in the scriptures and sutras. Um, you know, so what would happen to the people see, seeing that today, right? They would see, oh, look at look at that. It's it's right here, written in the sutras, it's in the scripture. So, but it's just knowledge, right? That's just the knowledge. Right, how do you, you don't get that point transmission? Right, so that's so it becomes a an obstacle really for people who uh, know about it. Right, they they've heard it say no, they haven't received it out, but but they you know unfortunately today I mean you have if you go online you'll find you know people are like deliberately revealing you know the three treasures. Okay. Um, so either, you know, they, I guess they must have received the Tao, but they, uh, they turned against the Tao, okay? And then, and they, they reveal it. And so, 
So then people, they, they will see that, oh, hey, this is, oh, that's the two treasures. And then so they won't feel like they need to receive the data because um, they think that that knowledge is all they need. But of course, knowledge is just a form. It's not the real thing. It's not the point transmission. Okay, that's not the true doubt. Um, so yeah, you can say that uh, revealing having secret. Okay, so like in the temple, if we reveal or talk about the future years when the altar lamps are not lit, okay, uh, that's revealing. But that's, you know, you say that's relatively minor. Maybe we, we didn't realize it. Not. Uh, or we might casually or carelessly, arbitrarily, or maybe intentionally reveal the three treasures. So then that's that's not good. Okay. Uh, and and then maybe uh, worse, you know, we tell people who should not be told, right? When the opportunity is not right and when the opportunity is not mature to explain the, that uh, the three treasures. So that's to them. So that's not uh, obviously we don't do, we can't do that. We shouldn't do that. Okay. Uh, so heaven's secret cannot be revealed. Those who reveal it will suffer the consequences, and it will harm the uninitiated who gain knowledge. Right. So basically, you know, having the knowledge is not the same as receiving the true mind to mind transmission from the enlightened master with the heavenly mandate. Okay. Right. Especially that you know. So that first treasure, that, that point transmission, it's the true transmission. It's not knowledge. By right? opening the portal of the portal by the enlightened master, um, you know. What we can reveal is only the knowledge. So even when we talk about it, explain it, that's only knowledge, right? Uh, you know, revealing that only the knowledge is can be harmful, right? Because it may prevent those who learn of it not to receive true transmission, and then they won't be able to transcend uh, the reincarnation. So you know, we have to view this knowledge as just a form, an illusion. So don't uh, you know, we don't say, oh, this is knowledge, it's super secret knowledge. Uh, you know, the, the super secret knowledge is actually that point transmission, which we can't even talk about anyways, right? So, um, you know, it's, it's outside of the scriptures and it's not in the words and forms. Okay. Uh, all right. So number nine says, not conceal Tao from others, right? So after receiving the Tao, if we do not ferry people, guide and encourage Tao King or spread the Dharma, and just keep it to ourselves and cultivate ourselves to be an arha, basically just cultivate for ourselves is to conceal Tao from others, okay? So you can say that that's the external aspect. The internal is like, if we fail to manifest Tao in our virtues, okay? And we deal with matters and people with a dualistic, emotional or selfish human heart and mind and fail to cultivate the true nature to fulfill our life mission, okay? So, um, so basically, you know, if we don't manifest the Tao, uh, if we do not put the three treasures into practice, then you know how can we achieve enlightenment? So you know, re revealing the Tao is to cultivate practice or to propagate the Tao, right? Um, so um, to not conceal Tao, I mean, to to conceal Tao from others, you know, the, the, you can say is we don't ferry or encourage uh, or guide people to the path of Tao, um, or you know, we don't act always act. And respond according to affinity to have compassion and pity for all, especially those without affinity. Okay, so that's kind of a more higher level, more kind of internal. Okay, uh, so a true cultivator should have a sense of duty and mission to inherit the mission of Buddhas as their own, bury oneself when still, so that's kind of the internal cultivation, and bury others when in motion, external cultivation. Okay, so you know, it's just like uh, when we're poor, right, we can maintain personal integrity. And when we're rich, we can benefit everyone, right? Um, you know, <clears throat> if we don't think about, you know, personal success or failure, honor or disgrace, right? We, uh, you know, we pursue the Tao over material things, worry about Tao rather than property, okay? Then we definitely will not consider the Tao, okay? So we put, you know, Tao as more important than those uh, other things. So, uh, Number 10 says to repent to the best of my ability. That's the, the gentleman and the lady say sincerely cultivate find yourself. Okay, so basically, you know, uh, to put in our best effort um, in fulfilling these vows uh, and also in just in cultivation in general. Okay, <laughs> or so, you know, to put it into diligent actual practice. Okay, so, um, so again, if you know, 
to not do this, right? You know, it's basically to not be able to eliminate our bad habits, our temper, right, our faults, right? Cannot we can't stop the 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 afflictions or, or, or vexations and ignorance. We can't break the attachments to the forms uh, of, of ourself, you know, the ego, basically, and the dharma. Right? We cannot substantiate the truth. Okay? And at a heart, at the next level, it says, you know, not not be able to break the shackles of, you know, love or you know, family, you know, things like that, or attachments to people, uh, the life of fame, power, or wealth. Okay, to waste precious time. Right, and then uh, the next level would be to we make excuses, right? We say, oh, it's too hard, or, I'm too busy, or no time to listen, uh, to cultivate, or to navigate to to not go to the temple, and um, so, okay. Um, okay, so the best of one's ability is mainly about taking time outside of work to help propagate Tao and fairy people for self-enrichment, forming merits, and fulfilling vows. You know, a lot of times uh, you hear your stories of, uh, you know, someone received a Tao, but, you know, family members, maybe they're against it, uh, they don't support it, and so it's very difficult. But you know, maybe you have to take step by step. Okay, so um, yeah. you know, you, I mean, you, you may not be able to do much in the beginning, right? But over time, hopefully, uh, that will improve. All right. So conclusion. So the ten great vows are taken uh, by disciples of the White Era when they received Tao. Okay, so they are a guiding force in our cultivation. Okay, so vows are a commitment and must be fulfilled as a requirement to transcend and achieve enlightenment. And like fulfilling the vows is also a show of our sincerity. Uh, okay, so only by taking and fulfilling vows as part of cultivation can we completely transform our heart and mind from the mundane to the saintly, from vexation to bodhi, remove the obstacles of ignorant habits, elevate the mind to the level of Buddhas to be able to enter into the true reality. All right, so you know the, the vows, right? They're not optional when we, you know, receive the Tao, uh, but you know they are the result of painstaking efforts by Buddhas and saints to give us a clear goal and this force or power on this path of cultivation. So they help us to per persevere and give us confidence and courage to undertake our mission for as long as it takes. Okay. And I find, I find like say, so the holy teacher says, you know, do not just take the vows and forget about them. We must fulfill these 10 great vows by putting them into action, by cultivating ourselves and by propagating the Tao. Right? Only by doing these can we return back to God. And so as long as we can take and fulfill vows, cultivate until the end, we can go from being sages and saints in this world to being immortals and Buddhas, right? And our ancestors and past uh, uh, can also transcend. This is how we can uh, highlight the true value and the great glory of, of life, this life that we have here. Okay, uh, so yeah, okay. So may the force of vows be with you. All right, so that concludes this topic. Uh, if I had said anything wrong or not satisfactory, I asked the units for forgiveness and also asked transmitting masters and lecturers for corrections. Also dedicate the merits from this class to all the sentient beings who are suffering from the uh, global collective karma. Thank you.